Swift and Tips podcast. Well, in your experience, because you know you have been like four years using TCA, and there is no silver bullet in mm -hmm. any platform or so. But there are people out there that ask me, "Hey, uh, Pete, should I start using TCA, or how can I incorporate TCA to my project?" Or in your experience, what would you suggest for people uh, if they want to start a new project? Would you recommend to start using TCA right away, or uh, what, what are the challenges that? Yeah, I, I would. I mean, I, I think that it's it's definitely it's definitely worth a look. I would say, say that much, right? If you're thinking about starting a new project, I think it's worth evaluating. And one of the things about the, the guys who are there at Point Free is they've been pretty relentless in improving their library, you know, as much as possible, and making it easier and easier, you know, like. Yeah. Now they have, they've been leveraging macros in their latest release to make it even less boilerplate one has to write, which which is nice. I will say this though, because it's it is a third party technology. It's it's you want to make sure that you. Let's way to put this right. So you don't want to marry it so so deeply that you kind of to couple it of how mm -hmm. the, the the like you know what Apple's doing. In other words, right, right. So if you like, it's like you know, understanding how property wrappers work and observable state and the observable protocol, and understanding how bindings work in a typical Swift UI application, um, understanding really, you know, how how if you look at how Apple will write sample applications and, and example apps and how they view view models, it's it's you don't want to. I would say you don't want to become so entrenched in a TCA, you know, MVI mindset that you, you lose track of how MV, MVVM works or how, um, you know, how other people are u utilizing the platform. It's, it's not that there's a complete paradigm shift between the two and their incompatible worldviews. I mean, one thing that's nice about some, using like, something like TCA is you could just use it on certain features, not have to necessarily adopt it like throughout the entire app. Okay. Um, to and like anything else, it's like Swift UI, for example. You know, it's like we we certainly have. It is still a new platform, and it's evolving rapidly and getting more and more powerful. But we, you know, we've encountered places where there were either bugs in it or limitations and how it worked, where we needed to basically dip into UI kit based implementations. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's important to remember that Swift UI still is essentially an abstraction layer sitting on top of UI kit. Um, it'll probably be that way for quite some time. Maybe someday they'll say, hey, we've now SwiftUI is completely self-consistent and the UI kit's gone. <laughs> I don't know when that's going to happen, right? Um, yeah. Because UI kit is too big, it's an extremely powerful set of libraries, right? And you can do things in, in it that, you know, in the more imperative or even dip into some things like, you know, foundation libraries or core animation, whatever, um, that will maybe never work in SwiftUI. But for many, many, many of your UX flows, Swift UI is a, is the right level of abstraction because you don't really need, you know it 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 simplifies a lot of a lot of things as far as how information flows into the view and how things react and you don't need to there's a lot of bugs that you don't have to consider mm -hmm. um, that when you use when you're using Swift UI because because of that paradigm but um, but yeah it's it, it, like anything else it's important to, to always you have to have a broad view because uh, uh, you know a real production enterprise app it's probably going to have a have bits of everything even even if you're using tca for example as your as your primary uh ui layer architecture um you will probably still you know you may still have some imperative code or things where, where it's not going to work that well it's interesting too i see like they're also continuing to deepen their support to use tci in a ui kit based application right so yeah so it's not necessarily that that architecture is only designed for Swift UI. It happens to, to dovetail very nicely with Swift UI, right? Because mm -hmm. it's making a model and you have somebody observing observing that model and reacting to it. But um, I mean, we've even used used the, the the TCA mechanisms to do headless state machines in a few different places where there is no view. We're just it just was the right architecture to to manage some complex you know internal state machines that. Um, Otherwise, would have you know had to write some our own bespoke state machine type of code for. Um, so yeah, so it's a powerful it's a powerful library, and I I, I definitely recommend people look into it because I think it's you know I think it's got a good, it's it's become it's got a lot of mind share I think for a reason. It's really that they have some yeah. Really good yeah. That, that that is a really active community improving mm -hmm. mostly. I mean, 
mostly driven by by uh, Brandon Williams and Stephen Sellis, which yeah. is which are the the creators of TCA. I, I think definitely worth exploring TCA. Uh, but like yeah. you said, so it's a third party library that you should consider if you worth the effort a learning curve to learn it because I will say it's not obvious or trivial for most people. So the learning curve, the ramp up for, for new hires that in your project that they need to understand uh, a, a couple of things before actually understanding the full mindset of, of TCA. Well, it takes, takes some time. See, that's what we are dealing with. Uh, willing to to deal that's fine but if you need to go quickly with something maybe you can explore it later so it's um, yeah again, it's, it I, I agree exactly <laughs> it depends and and like like anything else i mean hopefully if you're if you're building your app in a way that's amenable to you know to componentization or as, as a level of abstraction then in theory you should be able to you know to drop it in or at least decide to adopt it in this part of your code you know without having to write everything um, yeah. But I will say this, I mean, they're, I think their, their, um, their videos and their, their, their blog posts are worth, anybody should watch them. They're, they're very, you know, they, they do a really good job of breaking down the problems we're trying to solve and explaining why they made the choices they made. And you, you may, you may, may or not agree with what they're doing, but they're, I, I've, every time I've watched any of their releases, I've learned something. Right. So yeah, definitely. Appreciate.